Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Coach Jeff Fundy. I'm back at it once again for you and for yours. Dropping that African history, that African knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Um, this one right here is going to take a look at Marcus Garvey. Or really about Pan-Africanism in general. You know what I'm saying? Not once. The Marcus Garvey, not that I know what I can recall. Maybe somebody out there can share the speech and put it in the inbox or something like that. You feel me? Put it in the comments, but... But when I recall, Marcus Garvey never claimed to be a nationalist, a uh, not a nationalist, excuse me, a pan-Africanist. You know what I'm saying? He never even really used the term, you know what I'm saying, from what I've been reading. The thing that Marcus Garvey was talking about, and this is written by his own hand, is African fundamentalism. Big difference, all right? You feel me? So we're going to go through this. Marcus Garvey, African fundamentalism from 1925. So people can know what's, what's really good. My fellow men of the Negro race, greetings. The time has come for the Negro to cast behind him his hero worship and adoration of other races and to start out immediately to create and emulate heroes of his own. Let me blow this up a little bit more. No. We must canonize our saints, create our martyrs, and elevate to positions of fame and honor, black men and women who have made distinct contributions to our racial history. Sojourner Truth is worthy of a place of sainthood along Journal of Art. Christopher Atticus and George William Corden are entitled to a halo of martyrdom with no less glory than the martyrs of any other race. Toussaint Overture, brilliant as a soldier and a statement, outshone that of Cromwell, Napoleon, and Washington. Hence, he is set up to the highest place among hero of man, uh, as a hero among men. Africa has produced countless numbers of men and women in war and in peace, who luster and bravery outside that of any other people. Then why not see the good and the perfection in ourselves? Ours, the right to our doctrine. We must inspire a literature and promulgate our doctrine of our own without any apologies to the powers that be. It's our right in God's. Let contrary sentiment and cross opinions go to the winds. Operation to the race independence is a weapon of the enemy to defeat the hopes of the unfortunate people. We are entitled to our own opinions and not obligated to or bounded by the opinions of others. A peep at the past. If others laugh at you and return the laughter to them, they might mimic you. Return the compliment with equal force. They have no more right to dishonor, disrespect, and disregard your feelings in manhood than you have dealing with them. Honor them when they, when they honor you. Disrespect and disregard them when they vilely treat you. Their ignorance is skin deep and an assumption that has no foundation in morals or in law. They have sprung from the same family tree of obscurity as we have. His, their history is as rude as his primitive as ours. Their ancestors ran wild and naked, lived in caves and in branches of trees like monkeys. As ours, they made human sacrifices, ate their own flesh of their dead, and the raw meat of the wild beasts for centuries even as they accused us of doing so. Their cannibalism was more prolonged than ours. When we embraced the arts and the sciences on the banks of the Nile, their ancestors were still drinking human blood and eating out of skulls of their conquered dead. When our civilization has reached a noonday of progress, they were still running naked, sleeping in holes and caves with rats, bats, and other insects and animals. After we have already unfathomed the mysteries of the stars and reduced heavenly constellations to a minute in the regular calculus, they were still backs woodsmen living in ignorance and blatant darkness. Why be discouraged? The world today is indebted to us for the benefits of civilization. They stole our arts and sciences from Africa. Then why should we be ashamed of ourselves? Their modern improvements are but duplicates of a grander civilization that we reflected thousands of years ago 
without the advantage of what is still buried and what is still hidden, to be resurrected and reintroduced by the intelligence of our generation and our prosperity. Why should we be discouraged because no one laughs at us because somebody laughs at us today? Who will tell us what tomorrow will bring forth? Did they not laugh at Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad? What was there not at Carthage, or Greece, or Rome? We see we have changes every day. So pray, work, be steadfast, and not dismayed. Nothing must kill the empire urge. As a Jew is held together by his religion, the white race by the assumption of an unwritten law of superiority, and the Mongolian by the precious tie of blood, so likewise the Negro must be united in a grand racial hierarchy. Our union must know no climb, boundary, or nationality. Like the great church of Rome, Negroes the world over must practice one faith, that in all confidence in themselves with one God, one aim, one destiny. Let no religious scruples, no political machine and machination divide us. But let us hold together all the times in every country and making ourselves a racial empire upon which the sun shall never set. Allegiance to race first. Let no voice but your own speak to you from the depths. Let no influences but your own raise you in time of peace and in time of war. All here but attend only that which concerns you. Your first allegiance shall be to your God, then to your family, race, and country. Remember always that the Jew in his political and economic urges is always a Jew first. The white man is first a white man under all circumstances. And you can do no less being first and always a Negro. And then, all else will take care of itself. Let no one inoculate you for their own conveniences. There is no humanity before that which starts with yourself. Charity begins at home. First, to thyself be true, and thou canst not be false to any man. We are arbitrators of our own destiny. God and nature first made us what we are. And then out of our own creative genius, we make ourselves what we want to be. Follow always that great law. Let the sky and the God be our limit and eternity our measurement. There is no height in which we cannot climb by using active intelligence of our mind. Mind creates, and much as we desire in nature, we can have through the creation in our own minds. Be at present, scientifically, we can race. You shall treat others as only as they treat you. But in your homes and everywhere as possible, you must treat the higher development of science to your children. And be sure to develop a race of scientists par excellence. For in science and religion lies our only hope to withstand the evil designs of modern materialism. Never forget your God. Remember, we live, work, and pray for the establishment of a great binding racial hierarchy and a, roundup, a rounding of a racial empire whose only natural and spiritual and political limits shall be God and Africa at home and abroad. Now, this is Marcus Garvey. That's the end of the thing. Now, this is Marcus Garvey, African Fundamentalism. Um, if you want it, you can find this in um, June, June 6th, 1925, of the Negro World. Um, I was deep. It was just inspiring me just reading it. You feel me? You know, we got the blue. The thing about our people that we don't that we understand, that we got the blueprints through all this stuff. It's just that we trapped in this individual and materialism. You know what I'm saying? That's what's messing this up and holding us down. You feel me? Like you said, the opportunity is our own destiny. We need the science and stuff like that. Or signs with the hope or the signs of modern materialism, which we fail, you know what I'm saying? You know religion fails to that. But science is tried and true and proof and being, you know, improves and overdues and stuff like that. You gotta, you know, 
it all be what it is. It's all it, it's the same outcome, mathematics. You know what I'm saying? At least see yourself first. That just should kill the urge, the empire urge. You know, it always comes back down to nation building. It always comes back down to Africa. Once again, Marcus Garvey, he was not a Pan-Africanist. He never said anything about being a Pan-Africanist. I never heard him use, I never, most of the stuff I read on him, I never heard him use the term. I never, you know, seen him or read him using the term of Pan-Africanism. He was an African internationalist. Anyway, this is a close to your fun day. Spend this time for you and for yours. Uh, much love to you. Happy New Year. You know what I'm saying? The spring equinox is in effect, so happy New Year. Basically making it, making the big things, making big gangs. So, um, like I said, if those get funny, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, man. You know what I'm saying? Show some love. Peace. Uh.